Welcome to the eighth video on polynomial factorization. This particular video will focus just on giving a few worked examples that have appeared in exams and the like. So the first example, question one. Show that the roots of p of x are at minus four, minus two and one, where p of x equals x squared plus two x plus four times two minus x minus five x squared plus two x and hence write p of x in factorised form and show the domain where p of x is greater than zero. So the first thing I'm going to do is expand out this p of x and see what we've got. So I'm going to multiply out the x squared plus 2x plus 4 onto the 2 minus x. So I'm going to get a minus x cubed from doing the x squared times the x. The x squared's terms are cancelled because I get x squared times 2 and 2x times minus x. The x terms, I get 2x times 2, which is 4x, <coughs> minus 4x, so they cancel as well. So I get left with minus x cubed plus 8, and then minus 5x squared uh, minus 2x. So there's my polynomial it's in a simplified form. Now, what the question actually asks is it says show that the roots are at minus 4, minus 2, and 1. So all we do here is simply substitute in the numbers. So p of minus 4 is going to be 64 plus 8 minus 5 times 16, which will be 80, plus 8. And you'll see that is indeed 0. p of minus 2 is going to be 8 plus 8 minus 20 plus 4, which again is 0. And p of 1 is going to be minus 1 plus 8 minus 5 minus 2, which again is 0. So we've done the easy bit, we've shown that those are the roots, and now it's clear that this polynomial has got a first coefficient um, x cubed. Now there's a minus, I'll deal with that in a minute. So given I know the roots, I can write this as x plus 4, that's the root at minus 4, x plus 2, that's the root at minus 2, x minus 1, that's the root at 1. However, there's a negative coefficient on the x cubed, so I get a minus at the front. Now, the next bit of the question says, show the domain where p of x is greater than 0. So I'm going to squeeze in a little sketch here so that we can see what's going on. And I'm going to mark on this, um, if I make this x, and I make the vertical axis p of x, and I'm going to mark on this the roots. So I had a root at 1, a root at minus 2, and a root at minus 4. So let's ask a simple question. Um, without doing this in detail because it's a different topic. If x is large, then clearly p of x is negative because I've got a minus x cubed. So to the right of x equals 1, it will be clear that I've got a negative number. Okay, because x plus 4 would be positive, x plus 2 would be positive, x minus 1 would be positive. So, and then every time I go through a different route, the sign changes. So I'm going to have oops, a, a shape that does something like this. So you'll see I'm negative to the right of 1. I'm positive between minus 2 and 1. I'm negative between minus 4 and 2. And I'm positive to the left of minus 4. Now we'll need this information for part 2. So here's part two. Using the factorised form of p of x, determine the domain such that 5x squared plus 2x over 2 minus x is less than x squared plus 2x plus 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, remove the denominator term, which makes this quite difficult. So I can write 5x squared plus 2x is less than x squared plus 2x plus 4 times 2 minus x. And I'm going to put an if here. If 
2 minus x is greater than 0. And you get a similar statement, 5x squared plus 2x, but this time it's going to be greater than x squared plus 2x plus 4 times 2 minus x if 2 minus x is less than 0. So what we're saying is if you multiply both sides by 2 minus x, if 2 minus x is negative, then clearly it changes the sign of the inequality. So that's all I've done there. Now, if you look at the terms that we've got here, you'll notice they look surprisingly similar to the p of x we had on the previous page. So if I start by just doing the top line, okay, then what I've got is 0 is less than x squared plus 2x plus 4 times 2 minus x minus 5x squared plus 2x and hopefully you'll see this is the same as saying naught is less than p of x. It's exactly the p we had on the previous page and this goes along um, with the extra condition and 2 minus x greater than naught. So the first condition is p of x is greater than naught and 2 minus x is greater than naught. Okay, which means that x is less than 2. If we do the second condition, the inequality went the other way around. So we've now got naught is greater than p of x and 2 minus x. Sorry, I've um, not done that very neatly. And 2 minus x is less than naught. So we've got two different conditions and if either of those conditions are satisfied then we satisfy our original criteria which was set up here. So what I'll do now is I'll redo the sketch we had on the previous page. Okay and then I will add on to this sketch our new criteria. So this sketch had p of x on it. There we go. That was p of x done very <coughs> crudely with numbers 1, minus 2 and minus 4. So let's look at condition 1. That's condition 1 here. Okay, so condition 1 said p of x is bigger than 0 and I can see where that occurs and 2 minus x is greater than 0. In other words, uh, 2 is greater than x. Okay, so that tells you that x has got to be the left of this line here, so there's 2. So x is to be the left of that line and p of x has to be positive. So we end up with this region in here and this region in here. Okay, so you end up with um, x less than minus 4 or minus 2 less than x less than 1. Now, what was the um, second criteria? We had naught is greater than p of x, so p of x is negative, and 2 minus x is less than 0. In other words, x is bigger than 2. Well, if I take x bigger than 2, um, then p of x is indeed negative. Okay, so we should also get this region in here. Okay, so we're also going to get x greater than 2. Right, exam question two. So this is a similar sort of question, but this one is slightly more straightforward. So what is the domain for which x squared minus 2x minus 6 over x minus 2 is less than or equal to 2x plus 5? So first I rewrite that by getting rid of the denominator. x squared minus 2x minus 6 is less than or equal to 2x plus 5 times x minus 2 and 
x minus 2 greater than 0, or you can have x squared minus 2x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 2x plus 5 times x minus 2, and x minus 2 is less than 0. So my original single inequality gets replaced by two inequalities, because when I multiply it by x minus 2, that might be positive, or it might be negative. Now, the next thing to do is to multiply out all the brackets and bring things onto the same side. So I'm going to start by looking at this one, number 1. So number 1, I've got 0 less than or equal to. So I'll multiply out the 2x plus 5 and the x minus 2. So I get 2x squared plus x minus 10. And then I bring the things across from the other side. Minus x squared plus 2x plus 6, which gives me 0 less than or equal to x squared plus 3x minus 4 or 0 less than or equal to x plus 4x minus 1. And you had on this, if you remember, we also had this condition here and x minus 2 greater than 0. So that's one criteria. And then if we take here number 2, what would number 2 give us? It would give us the inequality the other way around, so 0 greater than or equal to x plus 4, x minus 1, and x minus 2 less than 0. OK, so we've now got two inequalities to check. So as before, let's do our simple sketch to see what this quadratic looks like, this x plus 4 times x minus 1. So there's a root at minus 4, a root at 1, and you've got a simple sort of quadratic shape here. There it is. And so we're asking ourselves, if we look at criteria 1, is this greater than 0? Now, for it to be greater than 0, I have to be either to the right of 1 or to the left of minus 4. And the other condition was that x minus 2 is greater than 0, i.e. x has to be greater than 2. So in other words, you end up with just x greater than 2 from condition 1. OK? That's all you get left with, x greater than 2. What about condition 2? Well, condition 2 said that you had to be negative, i.e. 0 greater than or equal to x plus 4 times x minus 1, and x minus 2 is less than 0, which says x less than 2. So in which case, you get all of this region in here. So in other words, you get minus 4 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1. Right, exam question 3. What is the domain for which x to the 4 minus x cubed minus 5x squared plus 5 is less than or equal to 1 minus x cubed? Now this one is surprisingly easy, in fact. So first of all, I'm just going to move everything to the same side of the inequality. So I get x to the 4 minus x cubed minus 5x squared plus 5 minus 1 plus x cubed less than or equal to naught. And you'll notice we get something convenient here. Um, so that should be a cube there. That this x cubed and this x cubed cancel. And so what we get left with is x to the 4 minus 5x squared plus 4 less than or equal to 0. Now, you may remember from a previous video that we can simplify this by using a substitution p equals x squared, because this is quadratic in x squared. So I can now write p squared minus 5p plus 4 less than or equal to 0. And this can be written as p minus 4, p 
minus 1, less than or equal to 0. And now I can substitute back in terms of x squared. So I get x squared minus 4, x squared minus 1, less than or equal to 0. And you'll notice these have the um, difference of squares shape. So now I can write this as x plus 2, x minus 2, x plus 1, x minus 1, less than or equal to 0. Now this is a quartic, but again, if I just squeeze in a little sketch down here, we can see the nature of the solution very, very easily. I've got roots at 2 and 1 and minus 1 and minus 2. It's a quartic with a positive x to the 4, and so therefore it's going to be positive for large x, and then it will change sign every time it goes through a root. So you'll get a shape a bit like this. And so clearly, okay, the question we're asked is when is this quartic negative? And you can see it's in this domain down here between minus 2 and minus 1, and in this domain down here between 1 and 2.